Welcome, guys, to a episode of Mindset U, where we're going to dive into communities. Basically, what what is a community? How do we define a community? And how how we make friends in our thirties? <laughs> but more than that, we're going to talk about how we maintain a community and how we are able to connect with people and feel understood, so that we're living in a life that we value and living with people that we value. Enjoy. Growing up in a in a situation where you you know you you feel like you know everything you have your your friends or whatever but no one can tell you what to do right to like now looking for for environments to 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 belong to right you know what I'm saying like I'm oh no I hard time, get it. yeah having a hard time explaining it but like the idea of like I'm too cool to be part of anything to now like it's like looking for for things where you can <laughs> be part can, I, can somebody <laughs> hug me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no so, uh, no no I think that's a I think that's a, a great <clears throat> thing um make more noise Huh? You, you good? Oh, nice. Thank you, Bubba. All I just said, how do you make friends over 30? <laughs> um, I, I joined a boxing gym. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> I go, you want to fight? And they go, yeah. And I go, cool. Let's hug afterwards. <laughs> and then <laughs> so that's nothing legit different how than I, the playground. I made friends <laughs> in my 30s. <laughs> no difference than the playground. Yeah, it's literally no different. You, you want to play? <laughs> like, it's it's literally no different. Um, I mean, I'm a prime example of somebody who's always just like, oh, no, I'm too cool. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do a team sport. I don't want to do this. Don't let me into a category. I don't want to commit to anything. I was fucking scared of committing to absolutely everything. And then... um. It really, it started with you guys with Vita Project, me going, okay, there's a community, but I still was like, not everybody's my cup of tea, so it's not really part of my community. I just love, you know, pretty much like three people there. And and then it it once, it was like, all right, well, Vita Project is, is not what it used to be anymore, and you guys are, are changing gears. And it's like, okay, where do I find my community when it comes to fitness? And and eventually boxing, which has become like a real passion of mine, um, especially moving to Englewood because skating kind of took a back burner because I don't live in Jersey City anymore. So I didn't use a skateboard to commute everywhere. That's where I made friends before in my 20s. And then it was like, all right, so what do I do? And I found a boxing gym and I got lucky that um, that I really I have a deep love for this boxing gym because a lot of the people there are really cool. And it happens to be 10 minutes from the house. So it's great. It's my home away from home. I literally got yelled at on Friday to go home because I was there in the morning, had a heavy leg day, and then went to go spar at night. And my physical and my trainer was like, dude, go home. Your legs are going to fucking kill you. And I was like, I'm good. I've done this before. You know what happened Saturday? I couldn't fucking walk. And then I had to go to activate and and play fucking games. <laughs> and oh, walk oh that's right. American Dream. About activate. It was so much fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's the older we get, I think the more that we realize time's limited. We're on borrowed time, essentially, mm-hmm. right? And and when the pandemic happened, I think and everything shut down and everything kind of like went to like a standstill and was like, oh shit, you're by yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, I think everybody was like, I, I want to feel a sense of community and we all went about it in our own ways. Um, mine happened to be fighting and getting black eyes all the time now. And, and you started after 2020. So, yeah, I started like really bo- like I started boxing with with, with D in like 2017 ish. But that was just like hitting the heavy bag in his garage and like training a little bit. Sometimes sparring, but the going to this gym was was after 2020. Like once I was when I went there, when I first started going there, I was still wearing a mask mm. and and working out in a mask, which was really fucking hard. 
Um, and you know that from from Vita Project when uh, we were all wearing masks and working out there. It's fucking mm-hmm. hard. It's even harder when you have to wear headgear and spar mm-hmm. and be like, hold on. <laughs> Rip up your mask. <laughs> you know, it gets all sweaty and shit. Um, yeah, but I really think the, the pandemic kind of changed everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm always curious with you because like you've always kind of had like this sense of community whether it was Vita Project or just like you have a big friends group and you guys are really into spending quality time together. So yeah. I'm always curious how that works for you as you get older and have families and everybody's lives get a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and you know, that's that's a key point. I feel like for me, commuting, building a community has always been very important. Like going to high school, right? So, you know, I'm the youngest of of uh four and you would think like i have a community with my family but i was so much younger than than everyone else that i always felt like i was the baby i was like i was a child for everyone you know my brother's 11 years older than me my sister seven and my other brother's five so we didn't really you know hang out together i was just the, the little brother yeah so we were always, kind of more like uncles and aunts kind of exactly yes yeah. yes that's a perfect description so for me i always felt like like uh, i was the only child in that sense which led me to to kind of seek out that that community el- elsewhere you know because my siblings got got along together very well and and saw them as a as a group um but i would I would create friendships that like for me were, these are my brothers, you know? Um, so like early on, like in, in the city, I would always have a, a group of friends who would be skating, you know, rollerblading together around New York city. Then moving to Jersey, like I lost all of that. That was my biggest distraught thing. Right. But quite quickly, I, I built a little, little crew of friends, right. When I first got here. And then in high school, we had a we had a a crew of friends in my grade, right, which are still my my good friends today. But it was interesting because um, after we left high school, that gets harder to to hang out. You're not in the same place. You're not going for the same thing. And it was interesting because uh, one of my friends, uh, Jonathan. He said to me one time, he was like, no, you're that guy. You're the guy who always brings us together. And I was like, oh, wow. I never, I've never, yeah, I've never seen that kind of perspective. And, you know, you guys, you guys joke because I'm so difficult with the, with the calendar and everything like that. But it's like, that's the only way these things work, <laughs> you know? So um, recognizing the community aspect, like that's part of the the aspect of what I, what I had with building Vida project. It's like, I know how important community is in all of that. Cause I also, you know, similar to you, my martial art background, that was another community for me. And I noticed how my drive for that community also hinged on the strength of the community. Right. There was times when things were falling apart, people were leaving all this stuff and your kind of commitment starts to falter during that time. Right. Yeah. So like, I was like, that's such an important part. And for me, the perspective of how to change people's lives always hinged upon the idea of how do we make this easy? Right. Which is how do we make someone commit to something that's entirely different? That's going to feel uncomfortable and everything. So it's highlighting those kind of innate psychological drivers and community is, is a primary example of that. Like, the whole oh, idea sure. I've shared with you with the with the dogs, like if you have a bad behaving dog, put them in a pack with other dogs. That dog will change behavior immediately, right? Like that yeah. concept. So for me, that's when I kind of came into into play with like building a community and and what comes into a strong community. So researching, understanding what the psychological aspects are, what's needed for that, what's the structure was very purposeful, intentional of like building a community for that. But since we, you know, closed down Vida Project, I haven't had that. You know, I haven't had that 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 environment where I can go and, and connect and on a daily basis and so on and so forth. Even like 
you know, what I do now is work and it's mostly from home. Right? So it's like really disconnected. <laughs> um, speaking well, of that, speaking of the working from home thing, <clears throat> it's also what pushes me to go to the gym all the time now because it's like I'm home all the time and I love being home. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like once like five o'clock hits, I start getting that like, I need to go outside. I need to go fucking do something like, and then Ash like, you're going to go to the gym now. I'm like, babe, this is my first time interacting with a human being today. Like in person, you're the first person I've spoken to in person today. I need to go outside. I'm going to go fucking crazy, <laughs> you know? And, um, the gym is, the gym is that place. So I get it. I get that yeah. completely. For me last year when, and you were part of this, when I, um, after we closed V the project, like I started setting up the the men's outing thing, right? Yeah. Which was the idea of like men getting together and going out doing fun stuff, like, and and I purposely wanted to make that light, like not super intense and so on and so forth, because I had gotten feedback that I'm I'm too intense. <laughs> no, but you just no. It's just people don't realize that the amount of playing that goes into getting. 15 dudes that are all adults into one fucking roof mm-hmm. in one room, yeah. let alone a roof. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's so like, no. it, it, so the whole idea of like it's something you want to do. So it's like, we're voting on, on experiences and so on and so forth. But that to me was like, to me in that moment, when I, we closed via the project. I didn't have that anymore. That was, I realized how important that was to me, like to have that, that environment, have that space. And, and for me, I was thinking of it as like, I wanted to start off that activity thing, but then also mm-hmm. create like a, a morning workout thing with, with whoever wanted to join from the men and, yeah. and all of that stuff. But then obviously the accident work, all that stuff like came, brought that into crash. Life. Yeah, which brings me to now, right? Yeah. So now, like, uh, one thing I haven't shared with you, just uh, joined and, and helping start a men's group with uh, one of my, my old clients, Bruce. Nice. And, you know, he's had a lot of experience with men groups and things like that. So he reached out to me, hey, I was thinking about this idea. I was like, I'm down, you know. And we've been kind of starting it. We had one meeting and kind of coming up with the base rules and everything and like i'm super excited about that You're starting a fight club <laughs> maybe eventually i'll punch an old dude in the chest but i have no <laughs> problem doing that <laughs> and another thing that i that i also participate is uh and i think i've i've uh invited you to the uh, book club oh yeah no <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've invited Moses and no answer. Yo, well, at least I'll answer you. I'll tell you yeah. no. Moses won't yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. That was the same thing, like, with the with the, with the outings, the men outings. Yeah. It was like, it's a message from, hey, we're going to this place. Just no answer. No answer. <laughs> oh, like, my kids, um, you know, you messaged me back saying, um, hey, we have a packed Saturday. We'll, you know try yeah. see if we can right moses no answer and then on sunday he's like yo my bad dude i was trying to make it but we ha-, like after the fact but i was like he didn't even see the message that's what i was thinking <laughs> but yeah oh our brother who likes to answer to osmosis and <laughs> did you know he was going to puerto rico no clue no is it for work? Is it for vacation? I have no. Is it a good time? Is it, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's vacation because we I'm don't have any vacation. We don't have any places in in Puerto Rico for our company. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah I just. <laughs> Which I'll be is in Puerto Rico for the next month. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, it's like with Moses. It's like I, I always feel like I have to drag him. The whole community topic like i feel like i have to drag him to be part of community because he he fights it but he needs it (laughs) like he admittedly needs it (laughs) listen that boy is one of the longest he's the longest friend i've ever had that i'm not related to (laughs) and 
the way that we communicate now, we hardly ever communicate, but when we do communicate, it's like, you know, but like you have to literally pull information out of him, like forcefully, yeah. repeatedly ask him questions. <laughs> How and are he, you? I'm good. No, no, seriously, dude, give me something. <laughs> but, but even when he answers, it's like annoyed that you don't know. <laughs> How dare you? How do you not know the things I didn't tell you? Honestly, it's like having another wife. Mo, I love Mo so much. <laughs> I hope you listen. I hope you listen to this while you're in Puerto Rico, Mo. I hope you're sitting on the beach, <laughs> listen to me to lightly talk shit about you for a second. <laughs> hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, please subscribe, like below, comment, let us know your thoughts, and continue to enjoy. But to to circle back to to like the community thing, like yeah. it's crazy because you know going back to like the schoolyard thing, school friends, like we're we're set on on uh, on communities by just like because we live we lived in Powell Park, that's how we ended up going to school, right? yeah. and then we forge these friendships just because proximity, but that's interesting because it takes care of this like vital need that you don't realize until until you don't have it yeah yeah that's true for somebody who would say no all the time the thing and then friends finally stop asking it's like whoa 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 <laughs> whoa i didn't want you guys to forget about me i just <laughs> you know and then it, i think it then it turns into like the fear of abandonment and like oh my god am i really alone and all these other like things then you say, am I a good friend? I don't fucking know. You know, then you say, well, I'm not there for anybody at the moment. I'm not asking how people are fucking doing. So, no, I'm not a great friend right now. And I need to fucking fix that. Yeah. So it's, I, it, you know, it's a it, it's a good reality check sometimes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, with my friends. They always invite me to, to things I'm not interested in at all. <laughs> right? Well, that's and really that, what it came down to. That's it's, the challenge. That's really it. And I say no, not because I don't want to see them. It's because I just don't want to do the activity that they're talking about doing. You know what's what's uh, infuriating for me? You know, I talked about like the, the men's group and, and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. So like I do these things to be able to, again, for the sake of community, to bring people together and, and to be together with, with other people. Yeah. And... I've I've heard this multiple times. Like, have either project, I'm inviting people to to come join the thing, and then for the men's group, I'm inviting people. I've heard it. Have either project, I've heard it for the men's group thing. That is like, yo, you only invite me for for these things that that you're setting up together. Why can't we just hang out? That to me, like, it doesn't compute <laughs> because it's like, how how are those things different? Yeah. And what's the perception that you have, like, with me inviting you <laughs> to hang out doing something that's planned versus um, message, hey, guys, um, next 20 minutes, you want to go to this bar somewhere? And I don't yeah. drink. I hate loud music. I hate, like, all of it, right? <laughs> and I hate the lack of planning. <laughs> but then when I plan something, it's like the... the it's like, why but would you? you think, but here's my question, though. Do you think that there is a going like, how come you don't just ask to hang out like one on one? Do you think people are looking for that when they and they're like, oh, why do you only ask me to hang out in a group setting? Do you think that could be? The I mean, perception is is everything, right? Yeah. Um, I on the note of like me always trying to bring people together. Mm -hmm. I also am the one for years and years that would reach out to individuals, hey, how you doing, what's happening, and so on and yeah. so forth, checking in. And and through that, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to this place. You want to come with me? Or, hey, you want to hang out this day? Mm -hmm. Right? So I I feel like at some point, I reach a point where I was like, I'm the one always supporting and upholding all these relationships. Yeah. I'm tired of it. No, I get that. So... I think that had a big impact in how, how everyone like received things. So it's like, mm -hmm. to me, it's like, I'm setting up this, this like group thing for all of us to, to, to get together. I'm doing the work for, to put it together. So 
like if we're hanging out in these group things, then we can from there we can create like individual hangouts and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you're un unwilling to do even the, the basics, then you have nothing to to complain about. Like, yeah, no, I think that's a, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a re really valid fucking point. Um, I also look at it this way, where it's like we all have a bunch of shit going on. We, we don't have the time to. We're not afforded the luxury, I guess. Sorry. Nobody's making a lot of noise behind me. Um, we don't have the luxury sometimes of being able to to plan these one-on-ones with certain groups of friends when you have a family, when there's work, when there's other obligations. So it's like, dude, I'm trying to do this so that we could I you know, so we can all hang out, we could all catch up, kind of thing. Not, you know, I'm trying to get the most the most bang for my buck at this point. <laughs> Mm -hmm. when it comes to having the you know moments with with friends because shit happens people move and stuff like that and you don't realize you know how quick but things I think, change but i think there's there's another element to that because like it is difficult it's by all means it is difficult but that's what planning allows right yeah. when when you actively engage in, in planning and you actively engage with a person of like, Hey, I'm going to try to make the space to, to hang out with you. Like that takes a lot of effort and energy, which brings the value even higher to yeah. that moment. And I think for me, that was part of, part of the challenge where I was putting so much energy into that. And, and then I, I, I met a few people that put that energy back that would reach out to me is like, Hey, let's hang out. Let's go grab a cup of coffee. Hey, let's, yeah. let's do this. And when I saw that contrast, I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So for me, like uh, that, that mutual engagement, I think ch changed how, how I, I, how I looked at like all my friendships and, and valued them. It's like, if no, you, that's fair, that's super fair. No. Yeah. So, so with that, like it kind of changed my, my, my thing of like, I'm just always trying to bring everyone together to like, I'm trying to hang out with the people who value me, who want to hang out with me and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah. I think that's another thing that we notice as we get older, right? Where it's like, you know, you kind of know where to put your, like what, I'm trying to think of the, like the right phrase for it without using like a sailboat. Without using a what? Without using a sailboat reference. Uh so it's like I think it's more like knowing where to put what like your eggs in the basket kind of thing or it's like you know you know who you want to give that that time to and that you know because you want you want that reciprocation too it can't it like you said before it can't always just be a one way street of you reaching out you reaching out how are you do, you know mm -hmm. um, it's rough and now I have some friends that that I keep in touch with, but a lot of the times we keep in touch and it's really just them like trauma dumping, mm -hmm. you know, for an hour and a half. And then I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, the whole time I'm like, that's crazy. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I, and I appreciate that, that, um, that they feel comfortable enough to, to say all this stuff. But then it's like, all right, I got to go. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll talk to you in two more months when you want to trauma dump again. And I'll go, okay, that's crazy. And they go, when they go, oh, how are you doing? They, the minute I say something, they got to go. You know, mm -hmm. so, so that stuff's always interesting when it comes to like allotting your time in that sense. And I've learned more to not answer those phone calls and say, hey, look, I'm busy. Or if you're going to, if you're going to fucking word vomit, I, don't, I, I can't do it today. And I, sometimes I feel bad saying that, but then other times like, no, I'm fucking justified and I should be able to be like, listen, I'm not here to get spoken at for 30 mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. You know? I 100% uh, <laughs> feel you on that because so now there's another element for me with that specifically, which is like, that's a big part of what I would do for a living yeah. Right. So like people pay me to come and help them understand what they're going through and go. So I hit a point too, where I was like, I'm getting a bunch of people that are number one paying for this, but then I got a bunch of people who aren't paying for this and just like, 
call me or, or, or show up or whatever to get a free session from me. So then it started creating like this turmoil within myself of you're like stealing from me, <laughs> you know? I never thought of it that way. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, because it's there. there's a reason why you like to come talk to me, right? Whether it's great listener or as you mm-hmm. give you perspective, whether it's, you know, I, I point you in the direction where you're going to, to find answers that you're looking for, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Those reasons are specific skill sets that I've developed over years. So I started feeling kind of taken advantage of in that way when these friends would take advantage of that by like just getting in proximity with me and I'm going to get sucked into it, you know? So then I started setting boundaries of like, Basically, and the way I set boundaries of it was like, I didn't give them nothing. You come, you're talking at me. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I can help you walk through those problems if you want to sign up for a few sessions. <laughs> I straight up started doing that. That's awesome. <laughs> and it was interesting because for for some of my friends, that moment was like, oh, shit, I didn't realize I was doing that. Yeah. All right. And signed up. Yeah. In a few sessions, which I, I, to me was an honor. And yeah. then there were other people who just stopped coming around, <laughs> you know, which right. I was like, okay, I see you, Yeah, <laughs> you know? So there, there's basically, it's like the, the, the idea of it's, it's an exchange, right? Whether it's a community, whether it's one-on-one or whatever, it's an exchange where <laughs> You're, you're putting something in and you're able to take from it. I found, uh, uh, you know, uh, Evelyn, shout out to you if you're listening, but at Vida Project, Evelyn was the only one that would ask me on a regular basis. Hey, how you doing? Mm. Hey, how, how did your, your kids thing go on this weekend? Right. And to me, that that like floored me. I was like shocked. It was like no one asked me about me, you know. Yeah. And and that that's like one of the the reasons why I, I connected with Evelyn because she she valued me as a person, not as just like someone to to help her. And and I think that's that's a key factor. Where like, how are you contributing as well? But. Are, in order to receive, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And that makes me feel better when it comes to sometimes feeling bad. When I'm like, I just don't got it in me to fucking listen to your problems right now, dude. Like, It's, it's not just like got it in you. It's like it, that takes a lot from you. It does. You know, and, and. Like you said, there's no exchange there. If that person says, hey, how you doing? As soon as you start talking, they're like, I got to go, right? There's no exchange there. It's just like if you have a, I always think about, I think it was a, the Stephen Covey book that talks about relationships are like uh, bank accounts where you're you're depositing and you're withdrawing, right? So every, every experience is a deposit or withdrawal. It makes it seem transactional until you realize that when you're not exchanging, right, things become, things become complacent in a relationship, whether it's friendship, whether it's, it's, you know, uh, intimate relationship. If we're not exchanging information, we're not exchanging dialogue. If we're, we just, I know Jay, Jay knows me. We haven't spoken in seven years. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> like, there's nothing there. <laughs> you know, only through like that, that exchange is, is, is the relationship being supported. Now, communication to me is not transactional in that. Tr- communication yeah. is a lot more complex. But when you understand the outline of like the transaction, there's a give and there's a take, I think it really changes things. 
No, it, it it truly does. That that actually makes a lot of sense. I know I keep saying it makes a lot of sense throughout this whole thing. It's <laughs> partially because I'm stoned, but partially because Francis, you're on a fucking roll today, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're making sense to me and you're not – my eyes haven't darted off yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like the whole thing with me being difficult about like calendar, all this stuff, structure, is because like understanding that in a community, like there's ha- there has to be checks and balances to create create that exchange and constant flow to happen like there has to be that structure otherwise what ends up happening is then you you create little segments little little clicks and little right that that break down the community as a whole and you just have these disconnected disjointed people hanging out right so forcing these exchanges forcing these interactions through structure allows you to kind of keep it going that's true yeah that makes more sense now I feel bad for ever. Now I feel kind of bad for ever giving you shit for the for the groups. <laughs> no, you you don't gotta feel bad. I, no, I, I don't really feel bad. But for a second, <laughs> I was like, oh, he put so much work into them, and I just made fun of him. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I do put a lot of work because it's like I said to me, it's a it's a it's a science. It's there's there's all these elements that play a role into it, mm-hmm. and understanding them. For me, I mean, I, I know I can be difficult because I get so easily frustrated. <laughs> You're not following the rules. You don't know why. <laughs> why? That's what's more, like, I think that's what's the most fun about it for me. When I start seeing you get upset, I'm like, ooh. Because <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, I already followed through what I had to do. Now it's like, now let's instigate. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's how I I I build and maintain communities. <laughs> It's yeah. by being yeah. difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it takes work. It takes work. The older you get, to to keep your friends around, not to keep your friends around, but to keep your friends getting together, mm-hmm. and to and to build a community. Um, because it's so easy to get wrapped up in your own shit that you forget that you know you have these connections with other people, and they are valuable, and they are meaningful, and you need to to nourish them, and you need to make them grow. You know, absolutely, and, uh, and that's why I'm excited for June. That's why I'm I'm so excited for the pool party and stuff like that to have all these different groups of people together that I love and be like, now you all get to meet. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, it's gonna be really cool. Is us being flipped? You're gonna be jacked, and I'm gonna be. A I big know. Boy. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm, I can't I'm a wait. Big you, still boy got, right you still got a way nicer butt than I do. So you got that. You and Mo still got that on me. <laughs> but when it comes to the, when it comes to this part right here, I'm looking fucking fantastic. Um, <laughs> I I can guarantee there's at least three times a day where Ash will catch me in the mirror, just like looking at my shoulders and my traps <laughs> in the back. I'm like, yo, you see that, babe? You see that? You see it's coming in? You see, I got muscles now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. It's fucking great. <laughs> um, with that said, I think that was a, I think that was actually a pretty good pod where we just kind of got into thinking things pretty quickly. Um, this is another episode of Mindset U. Uh, this is Jason here. We got Rancis. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and find us anywhere that you listen to podcasts, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, and anywhere else. Oh, and YouTube. And um, anywhere else that you can fucking find us. Is there any other like streaming platform? Like, are we on? Yeah. Like, um, what's like the weird one that people like Pandora or some shit like that? Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Uh, Audible. Um, All that stuff, right? There's uh, what is it called? There's like Twix. Twix. Yeah, like I know that there's so many other like streaming services that I've never yeah. knew existed, but then I'm like, oh shit, like you have like an actual like lucrative business. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, don't let me get sidetracked. <laughs> That's another episode of Mindset You. Um, yeah, talk to you guys later. Peace.